slap. You don't have anything to say? Look at him. He looks like he just. Oh, we're doing this for day. real? I thought we were just like. <laughs> I thought we were memeing. <laughs> it's it's like weird we to play the music and not have slap with some if scripted you, if, bit. You give me one more just quippy comeback. I'm hitting the pipe. <laughs> you will not. Not allowed. Dude, you literally no, no, don't no, have no. access. No. I need to. I need to set the record. He's looking on his here. phone. God damn no. it. <laughs> slap. Slap has figured out ways. He's made an alliance with Ben. So every yeah. time that you take away his role, Ben just immediately adds it back and he just spams the pipe. So we need to have some mm. serious reevaluations of what's going on here. Yeah, so the a, shrimp civil war begins. I've been torn in my morality between not wanting to be a rat, but also wanting to not let Slap get away with blatantly breaking the rules. Hello! Like, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Welcome to Shrimp Hours, number 94. Uh, hey, Ed's in on it too. He gave me a uh, soundboard privilege. Uh, Cody's here, Caleb's mute. here, Slap's yeah, here, Rusty's here. Civil war. That's what I'm saying. It's gonna be... The split. Yeah, who's yeah. Iron Man and who's uh, Captain America? Well, I'm not yeah, Captain Kurt America. Versus IndyCar shrimp style. <laughs> uh, Why all right. Why is Rusty in a liminal space today? I don't like how you're you're like at the edge of the frame. It's like you're trying to hide from us. He's got the. Key it's like he's lighting. trying. He's trying to like uh, present things. What's in What's the corner, the Rusty? We know what you're hiding. What's in the door, Rusty. He's never going to come back. Stop What's calling him out. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Okay, that's not <laughs> happening till episode 100. That's true. Episode 100 that slap goes in the closet. What episode is this? I wasn't listening. 94. 94. Oh my god. We are getting close. Dude, we're like, what, six weeks away? That's how that works. That's the only thing what is keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, speaking of uh, things that are somehow still alive, can we talk about NASCAR real quick? Just get it out of the way. No. Uh, Asgaral is still alive. I thought you were going to say IndyCar. <laughs> we, we will. We'll get to no. what's Twitter doing. And we are with this, uh, all right. Uh, NASCAR happened at Dover. Uh, Next Gen sucks. Xfinity's great. Uh, for some reason, Twitter's on a whole discourse again about how apparently... I don't know. It's just like all the all the like the the insider people are like, oh, there's always been arrow block. And like Mamba Smith wrote a whole paragraph about how there's always been aero blocking in NASCAR, and it's like, that's not the point. The point you is, can tell it's, who's on the it's worse than ever. Yeah, listen, yeah. if I was getting a oh, check, yeah. I, I'd be saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all know. good. It's all based. Uh, where's my check? Jim France, if I don't get it, I'm going to tell him the truth. If I was getting the check, I'd keep my, my mouth shut and not embarrass myself. Uh, but anyway, it's just, it's like, as with, Every time the next gen, no, that, that's a bad when you go race. like full Tucker Carlson and you just say, Screw the check, I'm gonna let it all hang out and just like go like down, like just like, like oh, the fucking Pepsi 400 was rigged in 2001, like just like just air it all out, <laughs> go down like full conspiracy theory brain to just give the people the red meat. <laughs> okay, dude, they're gonna call the cows, man, eat them all you can. <laughs> Uh, anyway, did anyone watch the Xfinity <laughs> race? Because I got home at like 4 p.m. and that shit was already over and I missed literally the entire thing. Nope. All right. Uh, way too many cautions, people being stupid. All right. I it's just thought dope, Ryan dude. Truex somehow won again at Dover. Dude, the second to last restart was like another fucking all time classic. Like, mm. how many times does. I don't know. It's It's been beaten to death but it just uh, it was it was uh, one of the uh, fattest nuts of all time can we talk about uh uh justin algar's like very devious plan with like 40 to go on a restart no all right so there's like rain in the area they think it's like on the way justin algar hasn't made his pit stop yet but he's been like hanging out and then uh his game plan was uh like oh the way the the caution came out like he couldn't choose like which lane to start from or whatever i forget what the the reasoning behind that was but um okay but uh he he wanted the outside to start off of and uh uh austin hill's up there he just like muscles austin hill out of the way and then uh like on well, like one to go they're in like turn four and then the pace car turns the lights back on like no you have to be down low and then like the commentary booth austin Cindric and whoever else was up there just like uh, uh did he just 
basically do that to buy himself another lap hoping for rain because that was incredibly based damn <laughs> imagine if that had worked and that actually just by like swerving after that no he just like muscled him up like kind of nudged in the way between him and the pace car and then austin hill just kind of like you know fuck you and he's like muscled his way up to the top and <laughs> And then uh, that gave, that made one more lap of caution, and then NASCAR just told the uh, all guy like, uh, "You have the bottom. Fuck you. Restart now. <laughs> if you do that again, we send you to the back." Damn. All right, it, it almost worked. It did give him an extra lap of caution. I wonder if they'll make a new rule just for him. Uh, well, it's Tuesday. I haven't said shit yet. Yeah. I saw the, the stands were decently packed. I saw people complaining like they couldn't drive to the track. Uh, and everyone kind of pointed out that like, yeah, Dover's only one weekend now, so everyone's showing up then. And then the race sucked, so. Oh, that's why there's a lot of people there. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. if nothing else, I mean, all the shitty things that nascar has done over the past few years i mean i feel like one of the good moves is diversifying the schedule and getting like some of these like dover doesn't need two dates yeah and plus it, no it i agree yeah pushes attendance richmond to doesn't need two yeah dude and then everybody shows up to that one date and it looks fucking packed like i saw it like all those pictures that were going around Twitter, they also took like, down a bunch fuck. of grandstands but yeah <laughs> yeah now pocono has one date and it's just like packed out the infield is like just absolutely good. sold out that's how it should be i'm still pissed that Michigan. they should away the I want the Pocono doubleheader back. I think we should be cup. Yeah, Saturday I think, I think that Sunday. was pretty based, honestly, because you get two Dude, points yeah. paying race, especially like now that we got like the uh, Olympics again. Like, that's a great way to just like open up a week and just have NBC like do that thing. And then, well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, I forget. I don't think they did the full 400 mile races. I think it was like 120 laps or something like that both days. Yeah, I think it was 300, like, 300. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's sick. It's fucking awesome. Bring it back. All right, uh, let's roll into some what's Twitter doing, because there's, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> I'll stick to the NASCAR side first, uh, because this kind of just uh, happened on Twitter today. Did you guys see the Carson host of our uh, all-star fan vote video? Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, I, I, I want Cody to watch this, because this ends up being kind of shrimp-pilled. Uh, let me pull this up for y'all. <laughs> I I saw uh, when he put it up like this afternoon, and I was just immediately like, "Oh, dude, that's fucking funny." Uh, so uh, a lot of drivers who like won't make the All Star fan vote because they're not going to be Chase Elliott have put out like funny enough video or like have like tried to like actually campaign. So sure Carson Hosevar put this out. It, but I've done a lot of research on campaigns. It's clever. A lot of them have ambassadors for them. So I got a few of my own. So just if you're not convinced on me already, take a listen. What's up, Carson? It's Kaz Grala. Hey, Carson. Heard you're uh, a fan. I'm hey, a fan. a fucking cameo. Battle right now. Oh, what's up, Carson? Voting <laughs> battle. <laughs> you got my support, man. I'll be pulling for you the whole way. I may not always push at the end, but. I'll push it for you, brother. And if I could vote for you every day, I would. Go win, and everybody vote for Carson. So, I'm sure you're... It's such a funny combination of things where, like, Austin Dillon is just reading off the screen. Like, he's just like, hey, man. For you the whole way. I may not always push at the end, but... Alfredo got the bit immediately. <laughs> and he was just playing into it, which I thought was hilarious, especially with the, uh... I may not push at the end, but I was just laughing earlier because we've always had the stupid idea of going on cameo and like getting some driver to say some dumb shit in this funny that car. Hey, campaigning hey, for that that we need. Hey, don't, well, don't spoil I mean. the bit. Hey, shrimp hours one hundred. Don't don't spoil the bit. <laughs> that shit is not. It's not coming out of my pocket. Just that's all wait. I'm saying. Just you wait. Yeah, let's let's spend that target money to make it happen, Caleb. Dude, I'm telling you, split five ways, it's like five bucks a person. We do that for the playoff bracket. Come on. <laughs> Playoffs? Kaz Grala posted the, uh... What the hell is this new Twitter thing? Kaz Sorry, Kaz, Kaz Grala posted, like, what the, the request was. I guess when you're in your bookmarks on Twitter and you click on a tweet, it does a stupid sidebar thing. What the fuck? Did you scroll through them? Ew. 
What? That's okay. Whatever. We can't get rid of the bots, but we can add in features nobody asked for. Oh yeah, did you see they're changing the interaction menu on a on mobile now? Like you click the three dots and it'll put like a little circle of things instead of a list. Ugh. What? I I get I get it on my uh my for you page is filled with just anti Twitter like shit, which is actually hilarious. Uh, like everyone complaining about Elon and the app just ends up there, and I see it just scrolling by. Okay, let's talk about IndyCar real quick. Twitter knows so, that you will like content. Tracking. IndyCar raced in Alabama and had like a triple header of just random IndyCar news going around. Uh, the first of which is that a fucking mannequin <laughs> fell off of a bridge <laughs> during the race. That was fucking Dude, hilarious. yeah, the sex doll so, falling off the bridge in the middle of it was just incredible. I, I, I guess, guess this is a bit where the the owner of, of the barber track... Oh, I don't know how much this we can show. But he had a, uh, a mannequin like hanging from a bridge. And that was just like his bit. Like she was just tied to the bottom under this underside of this bridge. And then she just fell Georgina. down. Apparently she's named Georgina. Does this not have the clip of her actually falling? It, it, like, it like cuts it's at the very end of it. It's like right there. Oh yeah. 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 And she freaking falls down and then gets hit by a car, which I thought was hilarious. Shout out to, uh, I forget who, who this was, was but he took her hand off. <laughs> God. Was that Hinchcliffe that asked, is that inflatable? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That was my just, favorite part. <laughs> the way it was dressed up did look very sex doll like. And yeah, actually, you're right. That was that was Hinchcliffe asking, "Is it inflatable?" <laughs> oh uh, I also shout out to this dude on Twitter who pointed out that uh, Jimmy Johnson has not crashed in a race weekend for the first time in like a year and a half. <laughs> so just shout out to him, I guess. Um. We so out there. that happened during the race, and then uh, this this all kind of follows before the race when IndyCars, the guy who owns the series, just was straight up cheating. I don't I don't, I don't listen. I didn't dig that much into the details on this because it's IndyCar, but apparently the Penske guys had software in their cars that allowed them to hit the push to pass button when they weren't supposed to. And everyone's like, oh, the software, yeah. yeah, and everyone's like, well, that's like blatant. That's horrible. They shouldn't have that software. And then they pull up footage and the guys are hitting the buttons when they're not supposed to be hitting the buttons. And it's yeah. like, OK, well, it's, it's like not willpower. Not willpower power. didn't hit the button. They couldn't get his ass. But it's well, so I, like I, th I think they're like putting him out to pasture. So I don't think he got the uh, software update. <laughs> but like, good. He got the respect do? of all the fans instead by it's. Yeah, the guy who owns the series owns the team that was just caught cheating. Like, what happens now? Dude. That's what we call conflict of interest. Yeah. I, I, do you think it's hilarious that, like, in the span of, like, three weeks, Joseph Newgarden has gone from, like, the face of IndyCar and just, like, beloved by all to he's just, like, hated and disrespected. Dude, because he came out and he put he did a whole thing where he was like, I didn't mean to hit the button. Like, I, I it wasn't supposed Like, I didn't cheat on purpose. And everyone's like, he was like crying during the interview. Come on, dude. Yeah, I've been uh, editing my Indy 500 vlog from last year, so I can scramble to have it out before this year's Indy 500. Yeah, just everyone just going nuts, freaking out for New Garden winning on that last lap, and yeah, now everyone just now just boo. <laughs> so the other hatred going on in IndyCar is David Malukas, who had that like dream second place run at uh, Gateway the other year. Uh, was driving for McLaren this year, and it was a big deal, and everyone's like, sick. Uh, broke his wrist mountain biking or something? And then he, he just got booted from the team, because apparently they had some clause where if you miss four races, you're just out of here. Right. Right. And he missed three races and also the fake desert thing, which apparently they counted as a race. And he and sued for that like, for, like, wrongful termination. Like, don't we have, no, like, in his the contract, dude. It was, it was in, in his, his contract. contract. Dude, file grievance. Can you imagine if they did that to Chase Elliott? No, the Federal Medical Leave Act means you can't fire somebody for being, like, medically, like, hurt or something. Fuck the contract. I lawyer that. <laughs> the contract yeah. can't violate the law. You want to fight <laughs> Big Zach and his McLaren lawyers? I don't think so. Uh, I, listen, listen, Malukas, I got a rental truck. We can solve this whole problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Uh, 
I don't know. McLaren you got does the not address. You hit me up. <laughs> they continue to not place themselves as a likable team, especially in IndyCar. Uh, and all of this big news surrounding IndyCar and their 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 Alabama weekend resulted in two hundred fifty thousand less people watching the broadcast than last year. So shout out to IndyCar. Well, they did go head to head against NASCAR. Yeah, but at Dover, I don't know. NASCAR, not NASCAR. IndyCar is on its like dying days. <laughs> yeah, like, it's bad. We got we got like two or three years left max before this shit's just we're out of here. The IndyCar season is literally just going to be the Indy 500 every year. Yeah, that's all it needs to be. That's, it. that's all that matters anyway. Does, does, does anybody care outside of like? Hey, I'm going to Nashville because that's going to be based. We are going to Nashville. Mm-hmm. They need more oh, ovals, man. dude. That's like that's what us G- Americans is always a banger. Texas is like almost always talk- a banger. No, no, no. I'm not talking about little like flat pussy ovals. I'm talking we need to send the Indy cars <laughs> going 240 in like 30 degree banking where they Bring touch the tires. Yeah, take them to Las Vegas again. Honestly, nah, I I brought this up when <laughs> I talked mean, about honestly? it. They need to go back to Vegas, dude. Like they. Yes. Kansas. Kansas. Kansas, Kansas would also Chicago be land, Kentucky. Put them on Chicago all the cookie cutters. Based. Unlimited push to pass. I want to see them go fat. Like, <laughs> like 300. <laughs> like minimum. Like, we, like we, we talk about this all the time. If you go from a Formula One race to any car, like you want to die. It's like it's <laughs> like they, they have to. No, no, no. Formula One is so fucking <laughs> tragic, dude. I mean, look I'm at Grover. But at John. least they're he fast. Almost, he did almost die, and he's like, shit, that wasn't accomplished that way. I'll just do it in Indy instead. I'm talking love- as a viewer. <laughs> I love the thought of just fucking unlimited push to pass. Like, just imagine, like, the driver's in the cockpit, and they're just like, burr, 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 and, like, every five seconds, just jamming the button to go faster. <laughs> Yeah, we we just uh we just go to Penske. We're just like, you know what? Uh, penalty rescinded. Everybody gets unlimited push to pass on every I just, track. Yeah, I can just hear Paul Tracy's dumbass voice. Oh, look at Joseph Newgarden. He's going 500 miles per hour with his fucking push to pass. <laughs> uh, all right. Can we roll in some drooper drown? Because there's a lot of shit that got announced literally today that I would love to at Brad, least quickly touch Brad. on. We'll, yeah, we'll get to that. All right, so first of all, I've got a few cars from last week to, to, to show you. I just want to point out, Jimmy Johnson ran, like, oh. dude, <laughs> just one of the ugliest. That what might the be the fuck worst is that? I've ever seen. Wait, it, so is this the updated one or the original one they put on the social media? One. So, so, oh, yeah, I forgot the old one. There was an old one? Hold on. Yeah, the I'm, one that got I'm leaked on Twitter this. forever ago. I oh yeah, that was, that was like, like a, a test car. That was, or sorry, a, a show car. I thought that was like a Rick Ware car, some sort of other back marker. When I saw Dude, that's what it, it looks like because like, oh, no, it's, it's just, no, it's, it's just still a back marker. Yeah, it's they're, still just another. Back they're doing this, this thing with Jimmy under... where they can't pick which dollar store to put on it, so they just put both dollar stores on it, and it's just Aren't bad. They both going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently not. They sponsored this big ass racing organization. You got. Just randomly toothpaste on the nose. Uh, and then, like, this not, like, none of these lines lining up is what really kills me. Like, this Coke over there? What's going on? I don't know. There's just a whole this, lot of, like, ugh. This is in that Denny Hamlin Mavis car territory where yeah. whoever designed it just needs to log into Illustrator and get their access revoked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, the gold number shadow on the orange roof number. Get out of here. I love uh, the oh. mobile one on the skirt. That honestly looks like it's a Halloween like All the specialty car. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, so I was trying to point hmm. this one out. Bubba hmm, Wallace sick. ran his Air Force scheme, but on the 23XI car. It's and awesome. It's great. Uh, but I do want to call out the 23XI rap team because they had a show Uh-oh. car where they managed to put the headlights <laughs> on wrong. I don't know how they did this. So you have the real race car and you have the show car where the headlights <laughs> droop oh, no. down instead of being above the bar. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. It's like uh, we've seen so many bad show cars where they have like the old Camry model, but like whatever. 
or even like they'll they'll put a next gen scheme on a on a gen six. But they have the new body, they have everything they need, and then they just I don't know. I I, I don't get it. I don't know how you put the headlights on wrong. They just didn't look at a picture of the car. How? Dude, they have a, a Hall of Fame resume of botches. Like yeah. it's like every other week at this point. Yeah. At least the ones on track look you know, like actual race cars now cuz they didn't used to. Um but this, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That whole uh stuff. oh, last car to show you just cuz like I I showed you the render of this car last week, the Carson Quapple Truck Season Blue car. Here's a picture of it on track. I just love the way this thing looks. Yeah. It's just a good looking car. The the blue and the black with just the like little yellow numbers and the little almost one lip line. Yeah, yeah. almost did. It almost win. Thing looks sick. Like that's just a cool looking car. All right. Uh, a lot of schemes got announced this week for stuff coming up. First of all, oh my god. Trackhouse. Trackhouse put it this bush light crocs combo. <laughs> <laughs> and I called them they out on Twitter. They even have like the Croc ankle thing there. So there's apparently some like Bush Light Croc collab that they put on the car. And I just want to point out that Trackhouse tweeted this paint scheme with the announcement. The one car has never looked this good. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just like... Dude, Which is this... weird because they had some banger paint schemes earlier this year. Yeah, they the fish this. one is great. This is horrifying. <laughs> this is... This is... Like, dude, they try to put like a crock on the side with the can, the mountains stay in front of it, the look, like the blue just, it's, oh man, this is the least cohesive thing I think I've seen in my life. I don't know what happened. Trackhouse used to be 100% bangers, and now they put out that stupid fish the other car? week, and now this. Nah, it's just some car. This is Kansas this week. It's yeah, I don't just know. Like, they, they've just what? been like, let's just put fucking 50 things on the side of the car yeah. every week. Bush light, jockey, bush light again, Crocs, <laughs> moose. The Boda. Even Wendy's gets a spot. That's just. Uh, oh, I know. They, dude, that bush light logo on the side, like, they're like, oh, I'm going to put the bush light. No, no, wait, the little, like, hole is for the Crocs. Well, that's how it is on the actual Crocs. But still, I don't know why you needed to do all that, especially when, uh, Someone someone pulled up that Justin Marks apparently ran a Crocs car in Arca like way back in the day. Oh, Justin Marks pulled up the picture himself. And this car actually slapped. <laughs> like the original yeah, Crocs car is sick. Eh, it's okay. God, what do you mean it's okay? It's got the friggin' holes on the front and the little Croc logo and then the like thing on the side. I it like looks it. a little stupid, but we'll you look a little slide. stupid. <laughs> it's Arca. It was probably made by a seventeen-year-old who didn't even get paid anything. That's yeah, true. at least they wrapped it. Now in Arca, all, every car is just white. Uh, okay. Kyle Larson throwback. This came out oh I think late last week. Oh where they're doing the full Terry Labonte uh, cornflakes experience, and it looks sick. Dude. Like, they did all the logos and shit, too. And dude, the, even with the number forward, it just looks so fucking No, natural. I was about Probably to say, the numbers, I, don't, I was about to say, I don't know if anybody's no, noticed, but, like, if you look where that number is, I like, I know it's slanted like crazy, but they, they let it slide a little bit. They did let it slide a little bit. We'll see if it actually gets wrapped like that. But it's not pushed forward as much as a lot of other. I know. Yeah. Isn't it crazy too. that the moment we put the number like a little bit like more towards the door, and then it's just like scheme of the last fucking three years, like it just looks well, incredible. It's a good throwback. Yeah, the number's still like insane, but it was insane on it's the It's the best throwback car. that the next gen's had. Like, period. That's so fucking good. No, the diecast that. That is what. What is a better throwback than that number five car? The Coca-Cola Polar Bears were pretty good. No, not that good. All right. Uh, oh, uh, another one that dropped today. Alex Bowman's going to run Jimmy Johnson car, Ooh, uh, which actually works really well. Like, like, yeah, really yeah, well. Um, and for once, Ally doesn't make things purple. Yeah. Usually they, they slap a bunch of purple on everything, but they actually left it in the original blue. Base. With the with the red stuff, and it translates pretty well. 
Good design. Good car. Alex Bowman is dangerously close to Austin Dillon levels of just, we're going to throw it back to Jimmy Johnson and Dale Sr. every year. Cause yeah, the weirdest thing is, so. in Jimmy's actual last race, they couldn't do this. Instead, they yeah, ran that dude. fridge thing. But... Silver fucking... Anyway. Brad mm. Keselowski. This Hold is on. this is my favorite thing in the <laughs> fucking world. Hold He's throwing on. back <laughs> to the JGTC <laughs> Supra. Hold on. Uh, who, which everyone who has ever played a Gran Turismo video game knows is iconic. Yeah. And they they did the whole ass Brad car with the old Castro logos. They still like tried to put their stupid little stripes on it, which I thought was kind of weird. But if you squint a little bit, it's money. This thing looks sick, even with the chrome numbers, especially with the chrome numbers. Actually, also great reveal graphic. With the, yeah. like, they threw the Japanese in here too, and they got like the same angle in the car. They get rid of the Toyota logos. No, it's still there. Okay. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, they're not weirdos like uh, Stuart Haas is with their brand. Jack Roush was a real weirdo about that. There was a guy that worked <laughs> at the shop who rolled up in a Toyota Tundra that he just bought. And for that week's paycheck, he paid him in Japanese yen. Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is sick. I uh, like this. This is one of those like stupid ideas that I would put on iRacing, and I cannot believe that they're actually doing this. Yeah, they Huge showed fan. like uh like three diecasts. It was like John Force, Casey Atwood, and uh, the Supra. And I was yeah. like, all right, so they might do John Force, but it's definitely gonna be Casey Atwood. And then they just yeah. go like full on Gran Turismo. I was like, ah, that's actually based. It's so cool, dude. That's so fucking hot. Sick. Uh, did they specify? Oh, yeah, they did say 1995. Oh, they still got the Japanese like print on there. Yeah, this is not the 95 car, but whatever. Looks I like cool. how they made like it just a little bit washed out and faded, so it looks like an actual like magazine ad. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's a great graphic. Uh, so Xfinity Series, Brandon Jones is throwing back all the way to 2018 Dale Jr. When he ran the Halbins car. Throwback to six years ago. So the team that still has this sponsor and this number is using a different number and a different sponsor to throw back to one of their own cars. From six years ago. From six years ago. This is just... That's not the biggest, like, egregious offense either. It's just the crazy part. Yeah, it's just like, why? And, yeah, and he the literally ran the car once, didn't he? Yeah. This is when he made his like comeback. The worst part is I'm gonna call him out because they're being they're being all cutesy on Twitter. Uh, that's not Twitter. They're being all cutesy on Twitter. Uh, yesterday when they just tweeted out the sort of the the iconic Dale yeah. Jr. like turned leaf like numbers, and everyone in the comments is like, "Oh shit, Rush like metal. dude, it's gonna be the it's gonna be like a sick Dale Jr. throwback because he ran this, you know." In sort of dude, the early Gen oh Six my days, God. They, oh, and you're then right, today <laughs> they're like, "Oh yeah, it's this," because oh. apparently there was some of that on this Dale Junior car. Oh, no. You know, this one might win the award whenever we create our own award, dude. Ceremony. For the social <laughs> admin, like, what are you Get the fuck out of here! Get him the fuck out of here! The worst this part is like drowny, dude. This kid, they they the put drownies. that whole thing out yesterday, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. Like, I I see you. I I thought the social media admin was being cute, and I was like, hell yeah, I see what you're doing. And then they put the car out today, and I I told them I'm taking my my hell yeah back because that's dude. I don't up. know what's more offensive showing dale jr like put on his little racing booties or show the dale (laughs) jr like number like what he better he better do something this year like you can't keep doing this yeah can't keep getting away with it say it rusty say the line (laughs) i hold on i got two more cars to show you uh oh (laughs) exalta put out like a teaser of their throwback and they're like Hey guys, add us to, uh, it was like, join our, like, close friends or something, and we'll show you our car when you'll see it first, and it's just this. <laughs> and everyone's like, hmm, I wonder what throwback this is, Exalt. <laughs> uh, but at least, like, I don't know, it'll probably look cool. Then, like, Jeff Gordon 2010? Just no subtlety whatsoever. It's like, yeah, it's just... It's, it's, 
I mean, it's kind of cool that it's an iconic enough car that you look at these pixels and everyone's like, oh, I know exactly what that is. Well, I can zoom it out far enough. It just looks like a normal picture just from far away. Yeah, yeah. it is. See? That's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, oh, Corey LaJoy announced that he is throwing what back to himself. Get uh, Corey LaJoy off my screen, dude. I'm tired of talking about Corey LaJoy. Yeah, yeah I'll get him out of here. Dude, back. Make it purple, dude. Just make it black, man. Why do you gotta fuck it he's up? He's sponsored by grapes. Fuck the grapes. <laughs> the the uh, logo is purple enough already. So here's a car that no one's ever heard of. No one remembers, but apparently yeah, Corey LaJoy. Yeah, yeah. No. So someone Corey pointed LaJoy out. <laughs> This K and N Pro Series car is also the last time Corey LaJoy won a race. <laughs> this is from like twelve years ago or something. So that's what yeah. I'm saying, dude. Like we need to we we need to have a serious discussion here of like there needs to be a certain level of criteria that needs to be met before you start throwing back to yourself. I feel like in yeah. the Cup Series, like if you're just gonna Christopher fucking... Bell did it the other year. Christopher Bell at least is relevant. Like <laughs> he has wins. He's been in the final four the last two years, DT. I can like I can excuse a Christopher okay. Bell. It's still no, iffy. No, but... It's iffy of a driver of his caliber. But if you're Corey LaJoy running in fucking 25th every week, getting outran by your rookie teammate, and you're just like, I don't know. What what has Corey LaJoy done in the Cup Series ever besides run in the top five at Atlanta that one time and get like Dale Jr. and the rest of the fucking hicks just on their feet the entire time? Like thinking he's about to break out and be anything that's not just a worthless garbage driver. I mean, he's done nothing for the past 10 years in Cup and you're going to throw back to yourself? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I agree with all of your statements, but I will add that Christopher Bell threw back to himself in his rookie season in the Cup Series when he, oh, he dude, ran know, his dude, like that, Kyle Busch truck dude, that's design. That's awful. That is that is the worst throwback. <laughs> uh, well, it could be worse because the last car I'm going to show you today, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing Legendary Organization uh, revealed the special Dewalt paint scheme that oh, Christopher Bell this. will be running at Darlington. Mm. Uh oh. Here's what it looks like. Get him the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> what? It celebrates the world's 100th year. Crystal win? It, uh, no. That's, uh... Celebrate 100 years of... Do oh my god. <laughs> dude, the comments to this tweet, I don't have them here, but the comments to this tweet are foul. <laughs> the fans are pissed. Because, uh, like... You have DeWalt as a sponsor, like a long time NASCAR sponsor with so many cool throwback options. Have they even thrown back to Kansas Championship yet? Like, is that a thing they've done? Wow, RFK cool. did it last year, but I don't. I don't think. Okay, what about DeWalt? Like, I don't think Gibbs has eat, actually you done you it. Slap the twenty on that. It's the easiest throwback ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. They delete this tweet. Or the Matt Kenseth like uh, nineteen ninety or two thousand uh, rookie season car. Just put that yeah, on dude. there. Hundred years celebrating, you know, for as long as we've been in the sport. First big car that we sponsored, you know. They might have deleted tweet. this tweet. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying. To... Oh no, I found it. Never mind. God damn it. They deleted the receipt. I found it again. I just wanted to look at the replies of people just being like. Dude, like, what? <laughs> Everyone's talking shit. Like, there's so many cool Kenseth cars you can pull up. Uh, someone, brony. someone quote tweeted it with, yeah, shout out to the brony. I love that, I love that gif of Carlton waiting for the fucking... Oh, yeah, it was Ryan Pistana. Ryan Pistana is just literally, like, no comment. Here's, like, imagine oh, this with flames, a 20 on it. Flames. Some DeWalt flames. Like, these would all go crazy hard. Uh... Literally any of these, and yeah. <laughs> Just Mark Martin. Dude, you even got Eric Eastep pissed. That's impressive. Well, yeah, he was a big Matt Kinseth fan, dude. He's desecrating his boy. Oh, they did to my Look at how they massacred my boy. That's yeah, that's. Like, why don't you? You can choose tough. anywhere to fucking <laughs> run that scheme, and you're like hey, Darlington. <laughs> I don't get it. Especially as like Joe Gibbs racing. I don't know how you do it, but anyway. 
Uh, that's all the uh, Dripper Drown I've got for you this week. Uh, we'll probably have more throwbacks revealed by the time this comes out, so... Keep an eye on next week. Alright, uh, let's go to the planet. Wash your fucking hands, Slap. That's not yet. <laughs> Animal planet. Do we have any animals to check in on? Uh, I, I guess I'll just sort of ask about experiences because Caleb went to a friggin' playoff hockey game and got to watch his team get destroyed in the last two minutes. No, it wasn't. Players. It wasn't destroyed. Is the the sad part? The sad part is is it was very much in hand. We were going to go back to Vancouver with the series tied after. Keep in mind, two back to back dominant games on their third goalie like an injured team like the scopes of this series if we just hold on to the lead it was three to one with two minutes left by the way which is a, up, a fantastic lead up against vancouver's third string goaltender by the way like their dudes were out they had this guy who's never played a playoff game before that they just called in to play that's rough and, and uh, nashville fucked it at the very end yeah no again great position it's like holy shit like we might actually like if we get through this like, we're going to go into Vancouver like, have a very real shot at taking the series lead and then being in control of the series. Um, but these motherfuckers have different ideas. Uh, Vancouver pulls the goalie. They're like, all right, get the fuck out of here. Keep in mind, I've never seen an empty network. Every time the Nashville Predators try to pull the goalie out, uh, they instantly just immediately get scored on. So they pull the goalie. Fucking one of the wingers Spoiler gets the goal. puck, flies up the ice. Like, it's a beautiful pass from Yossi. Just f right up past all the defenders. The crowd pops. Everybody's on their feet. Holy shit. Sisson shoots, empty net, and fucking misses from, like, five feet away. Like, he I swear to God. the post. <laughs> dude. You put what? fucking me on that ice, and I would have, I would have hit that shot. I like, I would have hit that goal. I, I want to hear about your experience, like in the building for some friggin' playoff hockey. Dude, What's I that retract like? I saw all you my statements last week. I retract every statement your ass I made off last about week. yours, uh, from your seat, which actually looked sick. The, I, I, I think I made a comment to the idea of like, you know, ticket prices are so cheap because like no one gives a fuck about hockey. Like, who, who cares? Um, I was sorely mistaken. Then you can see our, our seats right there. Yeah, I'll just say. Uh, this place was rocking uh, from before the puck drop. Uh, Are they right giving out shirts too? Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. Hell yeah, that's so much better than a. That's so much better than a towel. You just got a whole ass shirt. All right, all right. I'll show you what they what they gave to us. Uh, so we got. I got a shirt. Hell yeah. I was on the seat. Smash. Smash. They really. I'll show you. Smash. They really got us going. Is with these fucking little towels. Oh, they got you they towels loving. too. They Hell got yeah. a towel and the shirt. Yeah. It's got lights it's on fucking... it. Yeah, dude. What? Dude. 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 Okay. They were literally okay. like Preds, points where. Preds might be based. Preds might be based. <laughs> they were. I, I like I don't know. I was on my feet just screaming the entire time to the point where by the end of the third it was like halfway through the third period, I literally like had a migraine because I was just yelling so loud the entire time. Like I had to like I had the towel like over my face at points where I was just like, holy fuck, like I can't do this. Um but I, I powered through it because I was like, you know what, these boys have given us a good show. We're up three to one. And we're about to fucking win this game. So I'll power through the last like two minutes here. Headache be, be damned. Uh, anyway, so Sissons misses the, the fucking empty netter. And I'm pissed because I'm like, how the fuck do you miss that? Because uh, that would have sealed the game. Like it would have been 4-1 with like less than a minute left or something like that. Like we were, we were smooth sailing. Uh, so we reset it, whatever. Uh after the face off immediately gets scored on three to two. And we're just like, okay, like that was fucking like stupid. I'm like, all right. Um, Motherfuckers. yeah. And then there's like, <laughs> the the dude, yeah, there's like 11 <laughs> seconds or something on the clock. 
and literally just out and like they just straight just take the puck and put it straight into the fucking net to tie the game and they're like all cheering the thing is like it's so weird because i feel like like when you're in the stadium and you know the crowd's going wild oh hold on thank you uh the crowd's going wild everybody's freaking out the energy's up you know you're just on your feet screaming doing the whole thing the entire time life is great and then they score and there's like there's nothing like nobody dies, reacts to it. yeah yeah you just like you're just like what the fuck is happening i'm telling you i have never seen the energy sucked out of a building faster than going from up three to one and then literally 30 seconds later the game being tied like everybody's just sitting there in disbelief like what just happened uh long story short we go into overtime and literally like 20 seconds into it Dude. they just score and win the game it's already like you lose momentum like that oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's over knew, like it was over the moment yeah. the moment we let that tie go, goal go in whatever the fuck i knew it was like we're fucked um yeah i mean the, i would i was watching like that fucking uh atlanta falcons super bowl against the patriots Dude, and, like, don't it, fucking bring and, up that as Bullshit. as soon as like the mo shifted, I was like, "Oh, this is over." Yeah, it's over. Like as soon, as soon as like overtime started, I'm like already getting my shit together. I'm like, "No, it doesn't matter who's going to win the uh, coin toss." Like, dude, Atlanta's exhausted. They don't have the mo anymore. And then at Patriots win the coin toss. I was just like, "I know what's about to happen next." I, I, that was, I, that we that we was don't peak. need to watch this. Yeah, that was there's peak this, golden yeah. horseshoe up Brady's ass era too. Just. <laughs> yeah, I was did, explaining so, this. There was a perfect photo that it encapsulated it perfectly. It's during the coin toss. The uh, uh, Patriots players are looking up at the coin. Uh, Matt Ryan is looking down at the ground. He doesn't even want to fucking look at it. He knows it's over. <laughs> Dude, it, that game still pisses me off. Like, I have not watched highlights of that game to this day because it still pisses me off so bad. Dude, it, 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 like, <laughs> physically pained me to watch the uh john boys like seven part atlanta falcons history like series which is like five hours long and that last hour is just that game and it, they're like picking it apart meticulously and it's just like it, no no one has ever been more sure of themselves never no one has ever been more uh, like uh, like on top of the world feeling completely invincible invincible completely just in control of the universe and then just 30 minutes later down in the fucking basement I don't, know, like, I don't think any team no fandom has ever gone from that high to that low in that short a period of we time. still have not recovered to this day like yeah. that, the the franchise has not been the same like who said a winning record since no, we literally ha we we went to the playoffs the next year, lost to the Eagles when Julio dropped the ball. We have not been back to the playoffs since. We have not had one winning record since, and they they're not gonna fucking change that anytime soon. I don't want to get started on a rant there, but I don't that know. Was, I, yeah, there there was. I'm the tired of being nonsense. on the shit end of just sports, just absolute fucking it moments. Like, how do you? How are you this incompetent? How are you this stupid? We believed in you. Being a sports fan in the South when you don't when you don't watch uh, college football. That was just two short years after the fucking Super Bowl, where they gift wrapped Brady another one on a silver platter, where they threw it on the goal the line instead of running it to Marshawn. Yeah. Hey, let's throw it on the goal line instead of giving it to like oh, yeah, beast dumb. of a running back that can just plow through dudes. Dude. Caleb yeah. getting the fucking mid podcast Papa John's delivery is crazy. Dude, it looks so good. God, it makes me hungry. <laughs> I did. Thunder, you can refer to my Twitter pizza deliveries. But my first reaction to that was just like it wasn't even disbelief. Like I accepted. I was just like, I'm just gonna fucking kill myself. Like there's just no, there's <laughs> nothing else I can do. In this that is moment. what that is actually exactly what you said. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Let me pull this up with the audio. <laughs> Uh, how do I do that? There we go. I love the Preds. I love playoff hockey. I might kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good fucking tweet. It's not also, a podcast without Caleb wishing death upon somebody, and he I, can I, do I, it to himself if he yeah. wants to. Got that exact comment on last week's podcast. I do want. I just <laughs> noticed this. I didn't see this before. While you were at the game, some random dude was talking shit about your YouTube channel. Oh yeah, dude. Dude, <laughs> they like 
just the, uh, oop, I, wrong I got button. A, I got it's just like a random yeah. Caleb tweet. Like just a, a complete. Bot. It's a random thing. And this dude drops a comment and says, I'm a digital marketing expert. I visited your YouTube and see your SEO. Like, comment, subscriber, very low. I can grow these for you through our organic marketing. <laughs> That's a screenshot of your freaking video and like highlight that your shit. Dude, yeah. He's like, dude, you, you ain't got shit. No, no comments, no views, yeah, no, no likes. Bitches, yeah. I'll talk about <laughs> bot comment until it's like, oh shit, he actually screenshot. Well, no, he pulled yeah, it up was... with arrows and, and red boxes and everything. <laughs> I literally, I, like, I was sitting in the stadium uh, just eating food and I was just oh scrolling God. through my tweet or scrolling through Twitter. I saw this fucking pop up. So I literally just like out of the blue just quote tweeted and I was like, damn, this re dude really fucking pulled up the receipts on my ass. Like, what the fuck is this about? <laughs> just out of nowhere, dude. He's just like, hey, dude, you, your YouTube shit. You don't even. You, you don't even have a link to your YouTube channel. No, dude, your... I don't know. Like, what? You've got your et on here, and he was like, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a visit this guy's channel, and then circle some shit and make fun of him." I on literally, Twitter. I opened up my fucking personal email, and I had an email from this dude, and he was like, "Like, let me like fix your." I was like, "Dude, what the fuck?" I just deleted it <laughs> straight off my thing. I don't know what's going he wants on. With you that to guy. Be crypto, buy lots of crypto. Yeah, my YouTube channel will be a fucking yeah crypto farm in a week. Like, yeah, I'll do one of those live streams for sure. <laughs> All right, uh, that was Animal Planet, I guess. Uh, oh, 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 we got, got Cody's stories from the deep. Nothing crazy, just a standard spring dirt track story where, where the we hell got you? towards the end of the night. I was in Peoria, Illinois. Night was oh, yeah. going fine for the most part, aside from some audio hiccups early on that I got through pretty quickly, but there was some lingering weather in the area, and they were trying to get the show in pretty quickly, which, of course, you know that that's when everyone has to start crashing and take their sweet-ass time. So, yeah, with three races to go, all of a sudden, it just, <laughs> the heavens just opened up. And it's probably the most soaked I've been at a racetrack. I was scrambling to get all the gear packed up. Uh... <laughs> First the TVU, then the camera, then it was, yeah, it was a, not a fun time. And then there was lightning in the area, and it was on metal grandstands, so I had to. That's always fun. Getting electrocuted, I had to. Run oh yeah, down you're like the, the, you're the highest guy like up there too. Oh yeah, and this everyone had long <laughs> run down, so like no one's there to help me. I'm just getting poured on in the rain, just while it's lightning Damn. like crazy. I have to like reach down and unplug where I'm plugged into in a still live outlet as I'm literally laying on metal bleachers that are soaking wet, just praying to God that I don't get electrocuted the moment I grab that plug to unplug it. And then, yeah, I had to run down into the infield to get my audio stuff. I almost slipped and fell into my ass in the mushy quicksand <laughs> that the track turned into. And then, yeah, there's a Tough little out there. there's a little overhang like where the main entrance <laughs> to the track was that i just dragged all my shit underneath there and then dude if there's up if there's ever time there. for the like the cameraman gopro like that's what it's for i, <laughs> I was imagining the gopro of you but going crazy in, in the moment you're not thinking about like yeah, hey this would be some cool behind the scenes video just you're just thinking <laughs> of hey i'm hoping to not die in the next like 15 minutes that would take me to the timeline where just Cody fucking is dead, and we're all like, "Yeah, Cody got electrocuted." And then the fucking, I'm kind of Cody, take me Cody, to the timeline Cody. where Cody's dead. Wait. There's the title right there. there. <laughs> Cody, if you ever get struck by lightning and you live, your new nickname is Zeus. Mm. <laughs> I got the beard for it. Mm. Halfway there, I just need the electrical powers, the ability to control weather. Smite you guys. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I almost died in a massive springtime thunderstorm in Peoria. Gross. And then it was one of those things where once I finally got packed up and was on my way home, like I have to head northeast to go home, and that's exactly like the direction the storm's tracking. So oh. it's like hovering just right underneath <laughs> it. Just... Hell yeah. Yeah, it's like when I was driving down to South Alabama, like that storm front was like on my ass the whole fucking way down. <laughs> it followed me the whole way down I-85. And then I get to like South Alabama. I talk to the people there. It's like Thursday. I was like, yeah, you guys uh, cancel all the activities today? Like, yeah. And then I'm like, go back to my hotel. And then it's sunny by the time I get there. It was like 20 minutes away from the track. Hmm. 
Uh, I guess we'll just kind of media check in from here. Uh, I got a question for the old men. Uh, have you guys watched any of the Fallout yet? No. Nope. The Fallout show? No. No? Damn. I thought I felt like sure. Rusty would be all over that shit. I was waiting for a recommendation from Slap whether to watch it or not. So I asked him the I other didn't day. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I have never played give, any give of those games. Give me the fucking HBO New Vegas miniseries. Please, I beg of you. It's not New Vegas. But I liked it a lot. I didn't think I would, because I... Well, I mean, I don't know, maybe I thought I would. It's a cool premise, because I, I didn't really know, like, a lot of, the, like, the game lore. I just knew you're just a dude from a vault running around shooting friggin' robots and aliens and shit. Uh, but they, they do a great job of, like, sort of building up the story in the show, and, like, actually I was gonna say, there are, there are no aliens, but there actually are <laughs> in Fallout yeah. 3. Uh... But they actually like introduce you to interesting characters with like good arcs and just like sprinkle some lore in there and then like each episode they give you more details and you put things together and then uh, everything comes together and you're like, oh, this is actually really cool. Uh, and How it, long is each episode? Eight episodes, one hour each. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure like almost every single one ends in a cliffhanger. So just like get ready to watch more than one. <laughs> I might start that tonight. As soon as we're I, done here, so boys. I watched them two at a time, where like just uh, each night I'd go through two episodes, and it was very nice, very good. Money. They did a really very good nice. job with it. It makes me want to play the game, which is exactly what these like video game TV shows should do. Uh, and once again, much like HBO did with The Last of Us, we're just kind of proving how bad the Paramount Halo series is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, genuinely, genuinely good television. Uh, Does anybody remember back in like 2005, like Peter Jackson was supposed to make a Halo movie and that just got stuck in development hell and just never yeah. happened? Yep. God damn it. I wish I could live in that timeline. Cody's dead in that one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that time I got hit by a race car, it wasn't lightning. Yeah, he Back got hit by a fucking midget car and took it to the dome. <laughs> Cody was in that one grandstand. Just with a smile on my face. Uh, and it, came... At Sycamore, just ate it. Oh, I also, last night, Rusty, I took your recommendation and I watched Old Dune. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. It was actually better than I thought. <laughs> but I think it's only because I know like the yeah, story yeah, yeah. from watching the the like good ones, to where I can actually like, understand what's going on. Because I yeah, can exactly. kind of imagine exactly. someone who doesn't know the story watching that yeah. movie being like, "Huh?" I mean, there's still a few things that are totally confusing, like the friggin' space slug dudes, uh, and the like sound weapons and shit like that. I wasn't fully prepared for, but there's a lot of like. Like, you'd even have the exact same scenes in both movies. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's amazing how they can condense, like, a two-hour, like, narrative into, like, two minutes, and, like, it just goes bang, 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 like, it's, it's, yeah. it's, well, it's they, like, surreal. They spend, yeah, like, it's, it's, like, what, it's, like, that, the fact that they were able to put, like, a six, six-hour, like, two-part movie and to condense it down to, like, what was it, like, two hours? Yeah, well, they spend the first, like, hour and a half on, like, like, the first part, like, the first dude movie, yeah. and then they're just, like, and two years have passed, and this is his girlfriend now, and now this kid has popped out, and uh, everyone loves him. I gotta say, like, 1980s uh, Chaney, with the, with the big, like, 80s curly hair, she was doing things for me. <laughs> it, it was still, like, it was cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I also, like, enjoyed how much... Not just CG, but like filmmaking has changed to where like I look at that, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. But just imagining people that grew up watching that movie sitting down in the theater for Denis Villeneuve and just getting their fucking yeah, face dude. blown off by how yeah. good that movie is. It actually, made me appreciate if you went the back to like more. the 1980s and you just showed somebody like, hey, we remade this movie. This is what it looks like, dude. dude they, just... they would. They would... <laughs> They would be like, how the fuck did you actually make a real worm? <laughs> the worms actually didn't look that bad. 
There were definitely things that looked worse. The Dude. uh the yeah, like shields. I couldn't I couldn't get over the old shields. Slap, you're just giving me a beautiful idea. I, I wanna go back to the time of like Charlie Chaplin like silent movies and then just show them like five seconds or like a minute of Transformers like the 07 movie and they're just like what the fuck is going on <laughs> just show them something bad show them uh yeah I remember when my dad like showed me Star Wars like the original trilogy when I was like seven because it was like the 25th anniversary and they, these are like the remaster like VHS as it came out and they're like in Blockbuster. My dad's like, hey, you should watch this. And I've already watched like um, Jurassic Park, you know, all the CG dinosaurs and everything. I've watched Toy Story. So I know like what CGI is capable of. And I know that it's kind of relatively new. I'm a little kid, so I, like, I don't know like the whole timeline, but he's like showed me like yeah, I'm watching uh, Return of the Jedi and, like, the final space battle. I was like, wow, Dad, I didn't know they had CGI back then. He's like, no, these are all models. They did this by hand, like, models. Like, maybe they used a blue screen or something to, like, yeah. give it a background. But this is, like, all models, and they would, like, move it, like, frame by frame by hand and would just, like, film it at 25 frames a second. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. Like, as a kid, I'm just like... I'd seen stop motion. I knew what stop motion was, like the claymation and everything. And I was just like, that's insane to think that that's what you, that's the, the labor that went into that. And now you can just, like, there's still a lot of labor that goes into it now with like CGI and everything. But, you know, there's a reason why when they made that like offshoot, uh, uh, like film company, they called it industrial light and magic because that's literally what it fucking was. Yeah. It was magic. <laughs> There were definitely some moments in Old Dune where you could see, like, bad, like, green screen edges or just, like, clearly, like, painted mats where there's just, like, one dude walking around and the rest of the shot's just completely static. But it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't as bad as everyone sort of made it seem to be, but it was still kind of goofy. Uh, Alright, that's the media check-in. Unless anyone Hold else on, I, I did want to, I, I yeah? did want to make one note. I went to the movie theater on Saturday wow. to go watch a movie that was not of my, my own volition. I did not choose this movie, but um, if you know Challengers, uh, the tennis movie that... Uh, I saw a trailer for that, and it was just a bunch of people fucking, and then there was some tennis yeah, on the that side, That was too. my only exposure to it as well. I went into the... like cause, Again, it was like it was a girlfriend recommendation, so I was like, sure, like, what uh -huh. the fuck? Like, why not? Um, you yeah, mean you it was recommended actually, it to her? Yeah, true. <laughs> Uh, but no, it was actually, it was a lot better of a movie than I was expecting. There was okay. like a few scenes where I was like, I was like, I don't feel like I should be watching this in public with like people around me, but everything else was like, it, it was a pretty solid little, little, little flick. So if you, if you have 20 bucks to kill and you want to see some tennis with uh, like 10 or 15 minutes of just softcore porn, then go ahead. I don't know if tennis I do. with the tennis. Ben would love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's one scene where they're just like it's straight up like a threesome and i'm like that that was the one where i'm just like in the theater like i'm looking at my girlfriend i'm like should we like be watching this in public right now like this is not there's is no there, is there like somebody in here happen. cranking their hog as we speak i do that that <laughs> did like because all it was we walked in and there were like six people in there. It was all single women, and I was like, "Dude, there's there's someone fucking touching themselves right now." To this Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, I got I got tennis I got one more movie? media thing. Yeah, what's up? I uh, rewatched um, uh, Ridley Scott's uh, Kingdom of Alien. Heaven. <laughs> uh, the King Kingdom of Heaven, goddamn, from two thousand five. <laughs> And that that shit like he has it's it's amazing like after watching like Napoleon and then watching this and then watching like Black Hawk Down it's just like he's so fucking schizo brain like he doesn't know if he wants to like follow history or not or if he just wants to make shit up <laughs> like what's, Napoleon what's like about? Kingdom uh, Kingdom of Heaven is about a uh, the bastard son of a French lord who gets taken by his father and his father is basically like look I'm gonna make you my heir. And I have like land down in Jerusalem and you might be in a situation in which you're going to have to defend the kingdom of Jer Jerusalem from Salahuddin, who's growing this like massive Muslim army to go retake the city. 
and uh you know king baldwin the fourth the leper king you know the guy with the the silver mask in the movie you know he's he's like a fucking badass but he, he eventually dies and he basically like sets up like the bastard son to take over everything and uh you know it's, it's an amazing like uh just the vibes and the visuals from that movie are fucking second to none they're fucking great the history behind it completely fucking made up <laughs> <laughs> like some of that stuff is true king baldwin the leper king he was a real dude you know uh, uh the the story of the uh bastard son inheriting uh his father's land and titles and all that that happened he did go to jerusalem he was in the crusades and all that everything else just we made it the fuck up napoleon like all like a lot of that shit the the battle of austerlitz made the fuck up that's not how it went down at all damn and then he gets like black hawk down and like literally everything is perfect yeah there's like little nitpicky things like oh the helicopter didn't go down an intersection it was actually in somebody's backyard you know just little nitpicky stuff like that it doesn't change anything but and, and, like he is just so schizo brain. It's just like he will have something that's like meticulously documented. Then he does something like uh, Gladiator, where uh, it's like complete historical fiction. But that's fine because he yeah, gets yeah, like, that makes the sense. Yeah, he he gets that right, and he could do that for like the Crusades and just make up a story. But instead, he has like all this other stuff that actually did happen, and then he's like intersperses it with shit he just made up with like real people that actually existed and people like, Oh, King Baldwin and this guy and that guy, they actually did the thing. Like, no, that never happened. <laughs> it's, it's just That's like, kind of weird to bring in I, a real I, It's, it's like just... two different versions of the same guy that like pop up for different movies and you never know which one you're going to get. So you always like buy a ticket, like, all right, we're going to get like, uh, make the fuck, make shit the fuck up. Ridley Scott. Or we're going to get like based Ridley Scott. And you have to go afterwards and like fact check everything and be like, wait, did that actually happen? I mean, when I yeah, when spread I... misinformation online, <laughs> that's literally what it is. When I was watching uh, Kingdom of the Heaven, uh, Kingdom of Heaven, like first time I watched it, I was like in high school. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Did that shit actually happen? Like later in life, I watch it again, like when I'm in my 20s. And I'm like, let me go look at some of this shit. Like even on Wikipedia, I was like, no, that never fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> Source, I made it up. Uh, all right, let's open some emails. Great vibes. Send Terrible histor historical facts. Mail. What's your fucking hand slap? Send there it is. your fucking mail. Send them, Send in, them guys. in, guys. What's your fucking hand slap? Okay, Here's your fucking man. computer, Cody. Send them those emails at this point. It's working. Welcome to fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan fan mail. Uh, we got eight emails this that week, is a... which is a good number. He crushed that whole pizza. That is no, he didn't. Impressive. There's definitely half of that pizza still sitting there. All right, if you have uh pizzas, questions, comments, or concerns, some to shrimp hours presents at gmail dot com. We'll read them on the show. Or maybe we won't. Actually, no, we'll read it no matter what. Maybe we'll make fun of you. Maybe we won't. Uh, you or your deceased relatives. All right. Uh, the first email this week comes in from Luke. Uh, who says, Hi, Shrimps. If you could bring one old NASCAR track back, uh, Road America, uh, and get rid of one, which ones would you pick? I'd bring back Chicagoland and get rid of Texas. I know Cody's answer. Yeah, this is literally too easy. Get rid of Chicago, bring back Road America. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally been the easiest question I've ever been asked. Uh, all right. The next email comes You're in from Jack. You're not going to let the rest of us answer. Yeah. Fuck. Do you <laughs> care? I don't care. Damn. Dude, slap well, He cares. asked us. <laughs> I mean, shit, dude. God almighty. Or what are your answers? Go on to the next one. I don't want to anymore. All right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought You're Cody answered it well back enough. Madhouse, Bowman Gray Stadium. We're going back. Hold right. on. Real fast, DT. I just got... I just got a text, a random out of the blue text from uh, from Alex. Apparently, that the Chiefs are trying to relocate their stadium to right on the other side of the interstate where Kansas Speedway is, and it might Dude. pose a threat to the Speedway. Is what he's saying. Uh oh. Why would they move their stadium? Um, it has the Speedway and the MLS soccer stadium. Kansas is going to push super hard to get them. I voted no on their and the Royals' proposal to do bullshit. 
So I'm. They have a massive ass stadium. Arrowhead like, Stadium's been there well, for like sixty well, no, fucking they, years. The, they, Arrowhead is about to die. Unfortunately, oh, okay. I've been I've been keeping up with it, but it would be weird to see the Chiefs play like right across from where Kansas Speedway is. I just thought I would interject because I just like that's like the fucking Packers saying Rams. they're gonna leave Lambeau Field. Like, what the fuck is that Lambeau. shit? Cheese, cheese, Wisconsin. Uh, all right, the next email comes in from Jack, uh, who says, "My apologies for complimenting Caleb. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with the last okay, email, other than it being me who sent it. Uh, but it's cool to know Caleb was a tenor in choir, as I am right now. Oh no! Because <laughs> I'm sending this before the weekend, so I'll hear this email probably around this time next week. But I'm going to Dover. Uh, if it gets rained out again, I'm jumping off the grandstands. It's weird to say, but I've no idea what the hell's going on with." Gen Alpha anymore. Uh, he specifies, I'm not Gen Alpha. I am late Gen Z. So I want to know what your least favorite it's brain like a Gen is. Alpha. My sister is eight and constantly either sings Skibbity Toilet or the one song from Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know what dude, that is. Did you see the fucking... Hold on, did you see just the thousand yard stare on Rusty's face when <laughs> you said the word skibbity toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I'm sorry. Processing a skibbity toilet. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> oh no. Rusty doesn't even want to talk about it. He says, I'm sorry you had to read this and I would understand blocking my email from Jack. Um, Hey, can we get a life check on Jack after that fucking Dover race? Like you mentioned jumping but, uh, off the top of the grass. Yeah, but he said only if it rains out. It'd be all right. Yeah. I'm just saying, put me through like 300 laps of a fucking Dover, and I like, that might be my saw trap. Like, I might not make it. <laughs> it like didn't click in my head, but like. <laughs> uh, Caleb's saw trap is I like, transport him back to the 1980s. I make him watch a fucking Dover race in August that was 500 laps back in the day <laughs> in 95 degree heat. Dude, no, my, <laughs> no my jigsaw media. trap. Yeah, no, my jigsaw is fucking. Uh, in front of you are twelve mini golf holes, and you must complete all of them. <laughs> I found those scorecards from those games, by the way. I got the receipts. Dude, I I bet I was fucking fifty over par because at the end of that thing, I was just fucking driver into the fucking lake. Like, get me out of here, dude. So uh, I, it never like clicked in my head, but I'm not realizing that like. Rusty's kid is gonna grow up being like a crazy little zoomer. He's probably like already consuming skibbity hey, toilet Gen, Gen and just garbage. Gen content. Alpha is based, man. That skibbity toilet stuff. That's just a silly G mod video series that came out during like the two thousands, and they're keeping it alive, man. They're keeping the spirit of it alive. Slap I would guess. be watching skibbity toilet. <laughs> Dude, I grew up watching like random like Gmod videos <laughs> in like 2009. This is the exact same shit. <laughs> I'm just imagining fucking 40 year old slap shoes sitting on his like little ass phone, just watching Skibbity Toilet. <laughs> One of his coworkers walks up to him. What the fuck are you watching? <laughs> I'm like, I'm scared of the the YouTube kids generation of just brain rot like jack said like just garbage like just decide the future of our nation once they start voting hey oh. we're, we're heading to a point in history in which uh there's going to be like more dead youtubers than alive youtubers and Damn. one of them one of the dead youtubers is going to go viral and there's going to be like a like four generations removed group of kids are going to be like down Gosh, the forum just just be like oh the, like the, just worshiping this person just like down bad form like jeffrey dahmer or some shit you know just fucking weird about it you know are you okay okay slap no i'm not okay well the <laughs> well, I worked back to back 11 hour shifts in 80 degree heat i'm done with it bro <laughs> my brain we're is only cooked in, we're only in april yeah like slap three more months of warming up models. I found the I found the receipts from the mini nobody board. asked. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read off uh, Caleb's scores actually. Oh my god! So we did like it's... two separate sets of eighteen holes. There was like two separate courses. <laughs> we did thirty six holes. You're expecting me to sit through that shit? It's mini oh god. god. Fucking. We had done right. bowling. It... So on the Fucking... first one, the winner had a scored a forty five. 
Second place is 46. Third place is tied for 47. Then we have Caleb at 53. That's not that bad. Uh, the, 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 back, we'll get the second part, the second uh, series. That's only the, the back, first one. The back 18, uh, the winner got 42. Second place tied at 47. Third place at 50. And Caleb in last at 69. <laughs> 19, 19 strokes over the next oh closest person, second to last. You're an animal. 69, nice. <laughs> Yeah, once uh, we get into like the back half of like the the back eighteen, like he was just done with it. He's just like swinging this fucking golf club with one hand. Dude, it's like just like, it's he's like just like, like my skibbity toilet. I need my TikTok. On. I can't focus on anything. He was That's going really... to Jake in a PGA where he'd hit a bad putt, and then so he just take the driver just, and just yeah, fired just off smack the green. It. <laughs> it's like when we when we play a game for too long, like we get three hours in like a lethal company run, and we just start losing Caleb. Like it's just. He just starts. Can we just talk doing about the things. new Lethal Company uh, meta we came we up with. We have been on Lethal Company pretty, pretty. We, I, dude, I want to try. Have. Can we try that tonight? The mini games. The, 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 the mini games. I want to try one of the mini games. Oh yeah. Yeah, the hostage rescue. <laughs> yeah. So we had a. Jeez. What the fuck? <laughs> That's the Papa John's talk. God. I want to see that pizza box. Let me see what you got left. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> just the empty pizza box. I took a lot. I was gone. You got to finish those last Dude, two slices I took, I took on the like podcast. A five minute break too. Like, like I was, I was chilling for a minute. Like I closed the box and everything. <laughs> you got to finish those last two slices. Oh, dude, I'm going to. We so uh, just crushed a whole pizza on the podcast. <laughs> we beat our our lethal company, uh, like <laughs> quota beat record. Our dicks. <laughs> So then we had three days of just nonsense. We came up with this <laughs> dumb game idea where you just reverse teleport one guy into the facility. So he's just in like a random corner and then everyone else arms themselves with shovels and flashlights and keys and have to go like rescue the guy. And, are like, you allowed to like get him out maneuver alive. around if you're in the corner? Like you have to, are you trying to find your way you, up? You can find a place to hide. Like, yeah, you have to like hide. You can't area. like look for the an exit. Okay. Uh, and then it's up to the other guys to like save him. Kind of fun, just a stupid thing I came up with. When it was my turn to get rescued, it spawned me into a dead end with one of those smushers, like the only way in and out. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think I think me, Ed, and Cody rescued DT one time. I think it was I like they all found DT, got him halfway out. I like got with them. Cody and Ed both died. And like me and no. DT both took like damage. We like hobble back to the ship. No, we didn't we did not make it back. I remember that because oh, you, no, you, because you found me, and I was like, "Oh my god, someone actually found me!" And then you were like, "Oh, I just teleported here. Actually, everyone's already <laughs> stuck outside, getting eaten by like giants and shit." Yeah, yeah dude, it was, it was like a moment in like Black Hawk Down where the two like Delta Force guys like find the pilot. And like, where's the rescue party? And like, I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> there like, was you're two, fucked, buddy. <laughs> there was two incredibly close calls, like one each, with me and Slap, where uh. We were literally in the giant's hand, like about to be crunched, and we got teleported back to the ship, like Dude. right as the mouth was gonna get crunched down. There was one where where I had gotten turned into a mask, dude, and and you and Slap were the only ones alive. Ed and I were on the dead channel, and Slap <laughs> like teleports the zombie version of me into the ship, doesn't even realize it, and then hits and, and Ed and I are like, oh, he's fucked it, like they're all gonna die now, it's over. But he like takes off the ship, and the guy just falls out and slaps like. Oh, I thought I teleported DT's body. I don't know what happened. <laughs> They're both like they have no idea. They were like a second from killing everything. Anyway, great game. We'll play more. Yeah, of that. that wasn't even a mini game. That was still us trying to go for the record on quota. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got more emails to get through. We got another one from Luke. Uh, who says, "Hey, streams. I'm going to Road America for IndyCar this year for the second time. Are there any tips you have in general?" Last year, I tried to see the kink, but the path diverged, and I couldn't see it from the overlook. Bring one of those little folding Walmart chairs that you can like carry on your shoulder. Bring a small cooler. Yeah. Bring sunscreen. Maybe an umbrella. Do not yeah, sit on the back of sunscreen. a golf cart going full speed over the Johnsonville Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring some water too, and just like yeah. lots of water. Yeah. Play Definitely water visit pistachios. pistachios. You can definitely visit the kink. You just have like you can't see like the kink itself, but you can like 
see the it's, exit it's of kinda, it on like the back the, stretch. There's the, the kink there, and then you have like this, oh, like kind of like down the road a little bit. Like and to the like left of you. to the left of the go kart track, like kind of behind the go kart track. There's a little path where you can get to the back stretch. There's yeah, that little nature trail back there is based, by the way. Yeah. Here. I if you have the time, like also, I don't know how much time also, you're gonna be there, but uh, I would recommend Canada, doing. Canada corner at the bottom of the kettle bottoms and shit. You there's like that's uh, what I mean. Do, there's do like a lot of bodies down there. There's nothing greater than taking a shit while there's cars <laughs> like screaming down Canada corner at you. If, <laughs> if you have the time, go like go to the inside of the carousel, go behind the the go kart track, and take the walk down the back stretch. Because then you can go to the inside of Canada corner and take a dump well, as Slash suggested. Yeah, and then you can walk like up the hill. Uh, and get like back to the middle of the track. Oh, and play disc golf if you want. There is a little spot where you can kind of see the kink. So here's like the campgrounds for the carousel. Here's one yeah. of like, the concession buildings. Take this bridge. There's a little like hidden area back here where you can see. Well, the I think reverse. that's what he's saying because he's he's talking about the overlook. Yeah, you can see the reverse end of it, and then here's where DT was talking about. You go this way. So there, yeah, there's the go kart track. Past the go karts, and then like right down here, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little opening, and there's this path that goes down here. Yeah, and then you end there's up, and you can walk along trail. the back stretch. It's great. That's where you see like the exit of it. Yeah, up to, the, up to Canada Corner over here. Yeah, and you can walk all the way down to Canada Corner. You can yeah, just keep walking. The down there, uh, the and then you go there, it. and you can go up the hill, and then watch from turn five. Turn five is money too, because you can see yeah, turn like that five turn. where the trees are. Yeah, you're in the shade. You can see turn five, and you can see the last couple of corners too. It's kind of hard to get big to screen. from like when you're over here. It's kind of hard to get to, but yeah, there's also like all the stuff on the outside of Canada Corner. Yeah, we did not make it there. All these tunnels to get to. Anyway, that little square of trees right there, in between like the. Uh... The little pinched part of the track. Yeah, you can yeah see that's, the benches. that's where we sat for the cup race, and that's the best. Pl that's the best real estate in the whole place. You yeah, got yeah. The big screens in front of you. You can see a bunch of corners. There's concessions. There's, there's actual washrooms too. This concessions yeah. over here with like a kind of a balcony overlook where you can see like a decent amount of the track, like where these picnic tables are. Yeah, they got yeah. good cheese curds at that concession too. Mm. Tons mm. of cheese curds. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, let us know. Send us pictures if you, if you have them. Uh, I'm curious. Big World America fan. Uh, all right, the next email comes from our good friend from down under, Andrew R. Says, evening all y'all. Uh, while doing a statistics dive, because of course he would, uh, I worked out that if Kansas is the Penske track, then Martinsville and Dover are Hendrick tracks in terms of number of laps led. Sure. Yeah, we know that. Uh, what he says is interesting that they're both concrete. I guess so. Uh, if Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson lead a lap at Dover, then neither of them have finished lower than sixth at Dover in any race in any series. Huh. Is that because Dover most closely resembles a sprint car track? I don't think so. Uh, I'm sorry, Andrew. I appreciate all your hard work. I don't mean to shit on you every time you write an email <laughs> in, but... It says, it has been chucking down torrents of rain in Sydney this week. Even the bridge flooded. Which... Australian engineering at its finest. What? What the Jeez. fuck? What am How I looking at here? That work? <laughs> Bridge flood. <flying. laughs> that's not real. That cannot be real. That is not. That's not real. Uh. Can we look up? Where did you say Melbourne, Sydney, whatever, whatever the fuck? Sydney. Oh yeah, you see the Opera House. I didn't even realize. Um. The bridge, the bridge flooded? Flood? What do you can we, mean? Can we look up Sydney bridge flood? I need context. Sydney That's AI generated. Bridge flood. If you send us AI generated photos, you are banned. Viral fake <laughs> images of Sydney weather make a return during thunderstorms. Uh, you tried to fucking get us, Andrew R. Andrew R. isn't even from Australia. This has been a bit the entire time. Yeah, it's oh. from like, it's from Montana. There was a different bridge that actually flooded, though. That image was wrong, but uh, this bridge actually did flood. We're all just a uh, liar. But yeah, this is not real. I'm not this, having which drain. makes sense. It's like I'm like the low part of a bridge, like that. They do look. It's it's coming out on the right. See all the little drains coming. Oh, this, this, <laughs> oh, but not there's just tiny, so bigger. much rain. A little trickle. 
God. Uh, all right. The... Uh, here you go. Update. Oh, it's Joe the deceased. Rushed. That was fucking fast. All right. The next email comes in from Rusty Broussard, who says, I have an Animal Planet report. Oh. Uh, he said, one fan had too many beers. I don't know where this is. Is that a... Is this at Dover? Did he say he was going to Dover last week? I forgot. Uh... Oh, he was going to, like, Stafford. That's what it was. Mm. Uh, he said, one fan had too many beers and appeared to start beef with another fan and then got escorted out by security and a cop. Uh, the other animal is the weather because it was raining. Uh, oh. So uh, say it with me. Fuck the rain. Uh, also, one of the things I ate was barbecue chicken poutine. Mm. And it sent a picture, and it looks fucking good, dude. Shout out to Dang. Stafford, dude. Mm. That looks money. Dude, Are you going to criticize this like the poutine I had in Milwaukee? Well, I'm looking for the cheese curds. I think they're in there. Yeah, that one you had in Milwaukee was definitely fake. But yeah, good. Yeah, good they're, in there, the they're in there. I see them at the top. Yeah. yeah not, to, not to change the subject, but I just remembered something hilarious. I'm not sure if we even talked about this episode. Did we talk about that camera guy that was caught in 4K? Just, oh, like, dude, no, we did on... Just creeping on the thing women. I put in the group chat about the Fox Sport. Yeah, there's a camera operator who apparently Mitch. for like the last three weeks has just been zooming in on random women in the grandstands. Someone said he was like finding his focus or whatever, but um, well, yeah, on fucking two women's asses. Like, no. whenever I'm finding my focus on motorsports, thing, I usually use the back wall the furthest distance away from me that I'm gonna be shooting from. It's uh, you're leaking the group chat by the way. Are, uh... Oh, my bad. Oh no no no! <laughs> that's because that's where I got it from. No no no! No, we didn't. We, we didn't lose anything. I'm gonna edit this anyway. Really a hockey gift. Calm down. But yeah, but people yeah, are calling out. A, yeah, dude, this is the creepy one to me. What the for... fuck is this? Look at him. He's just like, all right, all right, all right. Trial, dude. Oh, he's finding his focus already. Oh God! Yeah. That's why I said I said add fucking preying on women to the list of NASCAR on Fox offenses. Go to Travis's moon car tweet from like last night, please. Now that you know that context, it's oh no, I didn't I was, see this. I was laughing so hard. Oh my god, he's <laughs> <laughs> just finding like women in the eye racing stand <laughs> from no. Mitch. God, god Mitch, fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops uh, That's a oh, damn good Travis tweet uh, There's more, more to this email still uh, It says I, I bought a decent amount of die casts Including a Davy Allison bank And a 2005 Terry Labonte cornflakes car Very timely uh, So aside from the weather meddling things It was a good trip to Stafford Also sent an image of himself Flipping off this guy <laughs> As one does how long are those fingernails? <laughs> I, dude, I didn't want to say it. I did not want to say it. Holy fuck, You gotta get dude. those chopped, man. You gotta... Oh my god. You can god. see through it to the sky. <laughs> hey, do you know what this is? <laughs> What's that on your desk? Okay, whatever. Dude, yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, me too, dude. <laughs> is that just the meta? Just have... Dude, do we all have nail clippers at our fuck? desk? Oh, I don't have anyone near me. It's honestly the most convenient thing when you're like watching something. You Rusty's looking for his. Get him chomped. <laughs> I did, uh, but yeah, I cleaned up. <laughs> he says, P.S. Fuck the Maple Leafs. Let's go, Bruins. Uh, get fucked because the Leafs won tonight. Ban uh, Welcome to Ban World. He also says, I forgot to mention that during the offseason, Stafford redid the restrooms on the midway behind the main grandstands, thus eliminating the piss trough that was previously in the restroom. Damn, Hollywood. they got real toilets out there. That's fantastic. Yeah, dude, I yeah, love a good trough Liberal media is trying to take away our beloved piss troughs. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I ever mentioned this at Atlanta, but they have the grandstands, like, divided into two. So there's, like, the main section, and then there's, like, you go down the fucking, like, little, like, embankment down to the rest of the stands. And everything, like, in the main grandstands is, like, nice, clean, like, a good, like, respectable bathroom. 
and then you fucking go into the restrooms that are down the embankment and it's just trough and like the fucking like <laughs> one light bulb hanging from the ceiling with the pool chain like it's like what the fuck am i it's like it's like the saw bathroom yeah dude that's exactly what i'm yeah that's exactly what i'm trying to describe just some dude chained up to a fucking pipe just walking <laughs> by the leg uh to watch a play game <laughs> two more so emails uh okay. Willie G writes in, he says, this question is for Rusty and Caleb. Uh, which Linkin Park album is better, Hybrid Theory oh. or Meteora? Uh, <laughs> dude, that's really tough. Uh, it's like asking to pick a favorite child. I'd say Meteora. The question is not for me, although, but I would agree. Although, I, I couldn't I stand imagine. to sacrifice the classic in the end. I, I, I can't do it, but... Doesn't Damn. even matter. <laughs> Rusty, what do you uh, think? What do you think? The correct answer is probably Meteora, but it didn't have the impact that Hybrid Theory. Yeah, dude, it doesn't like like Meteora has I like by volume more bangers, I feel like, but the bangers on Hybrid Theory are so much like so much better than yeah. the bangers on Meteora. Damn. That's a good question. Got you thinking. This might be the first good question we've had on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last email uh, for this week. Peyton writes in, Hello, Shrimps. First time fan mail for me, although I've been a listener since week one. Sorry to hear that. Uh, How has your brain survived? It just hopefully... took you like 94 weeks to put in an email? Like, what? How the fuck does that work? It's good. We keep making fun of everyone who sends in emails. I'm yeah, just scared too. <laughs> he says, hopefully yeah, this isn't I, I've been watching for I've been watching for two and a half years. I didn't fucking participate in the most widely accepted part of the program until now. God damn it. We're never gonna get another Peyton email. Dude, yeah, never 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 a first time emailer again. It's just fucking bullying. Just off the rip. This God. is cyberbullying. This is like YouTube sanction. Dude, yeah, this is just our excuse to be assholes to people and make each other well, laugh. If they, if they were based, then we wouldn't do this, but yeah, they're not fuck based. fuck you, Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Peyton might clap back here. Oh, Peyton says, last week Caleb said he's going to game, game for the Predators versus Canucks series. So I wanted to ask him with some Vancouver how shit. How it was I, watching your team shit themselves in the last three minutes get ass-fucked yeah, by the Canucks. Yeah, Peyton, okay. Have fun okay. golfing next week, Preds. Okay. And also, to be a bit nicer... Dude, Connor McDavid is literally about to relocate your fucking franchise because you're a bunch of goddamn losers. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Connor McDavid? I don't know. I'm pissed. I didn't Edmonton. Right yeah, they're, they're <laughs> gonna play next week. Okay, uh... He says, also to be a bit nicer, how was the experience of a playoff game? Uh, thanks, boys. I look forward to every podcast, and you all are great. Watch your fucking hand slap. God damn it. To also be nicer, Peyton, it was the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> and for three and a half quarters, uh, I walked in there, by the way. I told, I, told, uh, I told my girlfriend, I was like, hey, this is like a playoff game. Like We were like, we were like uh, you know, into it in the regular season. Like this one... It's just straight up, like, we need to bully, like, Canucks fans. Like, I saw a Canucks fan, it was just straight up, like, fuck you. Like, literally, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I want every player, when they come in to Bridgestone Arena, if they're not playing for the Predators, they just need to experience, like, just go through in their head every single decision that they've made up in, in like, their entire lives that have led this to, to this moment where... It's just a mistake to be inside this arena for an opposing team. Like, you need to regret being fucking born when you're playing a Bridgestone Arena. And that's the type of energy I took into that game. And I'd say it, it was pretty good. I didn't even mention this. I got on the Jumbotron. I was on the fucking Jumbotron. Um, the what? Oh. I was fucking, I was going ham on my towel. We <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> going ham on that's your hog, no. just cranking it. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I, I so wish somebody was recording, but like, yeah, I was going, I, I was going crazy. I looked up at the screen and it was my face and I was like, what the fuck? Like literally <laughs> Bella right next to me. She was like, what the fuck? And I was just like, my, my hype took over. I was just, let's go Prance. Like, let's fucking go. Let's go. Wave the towel, fucking get hype. And they repaid me by fucking losing because they're bitches. Yeah. But 
I need yeah, playoff true. hockey fans to reach the point of like English soccer to where they have to physically separate the like away team fans, otherwise it's just guaranteed. There a were two fight. Canucks fans. Uh, I I will say I, it took self restraint, but they like had to like shimmy on past us, like you know to get to their seats, and yeah. I just like. I don't know. I felt I, it took so much restraint to just not like bark like a fuck you. Like, go fuck yourself. Like, die. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Kill yourself. I got the rope in my car right now. <laughs> no, dude, it was all like I should have. It was all worth it because then you fucking. We, we choked the game and they're sitting there like laughing at each other. Like, fuck you. Like, I. You deserve debt. <laughs> all right. That was Shrimp Hours 94. <laughs> I just love the alright. Uh, Dude, that parking bit was good. Can we title this the timeline where Cody's dead? Uh, my personal saw trap. Oh, that's pretty good. My personal saw trap is sick. That's definitely better. Alright. Yeah. Uh, that, way, that way we don't have to wish death upon Cody. We've already we already done. have a title. Yeah, yeah we already have one of those. <laughs> we have so many titles that are just like, Cody's it's like dead, Cody's yeah. dead. We wish Cody's dead. Fuck you, Cody. Yeah, fuck you, Cody. you came out of here with <laughs> like we were having a just solid conversation. Uh, Cody's like, oh, I was scared for my life, and Caleb's just like, take me to the timeline where Cody's dead. <laughs> God, Damn. why does why does Cody hang out with us? Like, why doesn't he just say? Dude, fuck I don't know. I ask there myself was... that every fucking day. Wow, was... dude. Like, for my mental health, why do I hang out with? He's gonna pull an ed and just it's... never show up again. Dude, there was one podcast where we're just having like a wholesome discussion, and I forget what the context is, but like it all just culminated in a bit where it was like, imagine getting on a plane and like there's one seat left and it's fucking Cody. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't happen because Cody wouldn't be on a plane. Damn straight. Cody don't fly. Cody don't surf. Everyone say bye.